All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward Miko Rantanen. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Miko, great one for you guys. Just what, what did you like about the response tonight from, from that third period on Wednesday? Yeah, I think it was good. Uh, we, uh, we were more ready to play from the start, I think. I think the first period was probably our best. I think second was pretty good, too, especially first 10 minutes. But, yeah, overall, way better game. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Miko, uh, what does reaching a, a, I guess, landmark like 30 goals mean to you? Yeah, it means, you know, obviously, you're uh, happy to be there. I'm not, you, everybody knows those are not my first thing I'm thinking when I play hockey, you know, it's the two points for the team, but obviously I have a big role in the team and an offensive role, so it's nice to get on board. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Miko, I wanted to get your thoughts on playing without Nate. Obviously, uh, he's a big offensive presence, and he typically, you know, has a goal, has points, has shots, but yet you guys got it done without him and produced 37 shots as a team. Yeah, he's a big part of our team and uh, one of the best players in the league. Obviously, there's nobody who can rep replace him, but we have to do our best to try to do that. You know, I think Joe's did a really good job today. He played a Hell of a game, I think, in the in the first line, and, and uh, it's, it, it was fun to play with him. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Miko, that's actually what I was going to ask you, how uh, how you felt playing with Tyson Jost was and how you think he did in that top role. Yeah, he did good. You know, he works his, he works works so hard, you know, that's that's how he generates a lot from the four check, especially against these guys, they, they, how they play neutral zone. You have to dump a, dump a lot of bucks in, and he's really good at retrieving it, so. I think he showed it today and uh, got a goal for it. So uh, credit to him. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Miko, what have you seen out of Alex Newhook from just the few days you've seen of him? Really good kid, I think. Uh, everybody knows how uh, good player he is. Uh, you can see already he's not, not nervous out there. He plays, plays with poise and uh, he looks really good defensively too. He's making good reads and not giving up a lot. So I think he's going to be a good fit for us for many years. We'll take one more here for Miko. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Miko, when you have a lefty center like uh, Tyson Jost, are you able to play a little higher in the zone as a uh, for one-timers especially, as opposed to a guy like Nate who may skate a little higher, deeper into the zone on, on his right hand? So when – you know, Tyson gives you a pass, cross-hand pass. You're able to play a little deeper maybe and have a little wider angle at the net. Uh, I don't know. I don't really think about the game that way. It's mostly, like, it doesn't matter if it's lefty or righty. Obviously, there's a little bit different, and they're a little bit different different players. But, uh, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't think about it that way. All right. Thank you, Miko. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche defenseman Kale McCarr. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Kale, you had a goal, the G-Dub, uh, 2.7 shots. It seems like you did a lot of what Nate would have done if he was out there, if you could just talk about, you know, stepping up in the absence of your top centerman there. Yeah, I don't think anybody can fill Nate's role, obviously, but I think collectively as a group, everybody just has to step up and I touched on it um, just on the uh, kind of off-ice interview there that I think a lot of guys stepped up tonight and defensively I think we played a little bit better game it's just going to be improving from there but um, no I guys made good plays and um, uh, we were able to get through and we have a few chances early on in the power play too and uh, I think that just kind of sparked uh, some of the momentum that we had. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, what does uh, Miko reaching the the thirty goal mark say about the caliber of player he is, especially in a shortened season like this one? Yeah, Miko's obviously incredible. He's so powerful, and um, just as a player, uh, he he does everything um, very well all the time. So, um, no, he's definitely a guy that um, that should be a role model for a lot of other um, big up and coming guys as well. He's just. For such a how big he is, he's so mobile, and then he can put the puck in the back of the net as well. So he's kind of everything you want in a player. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, Kale, without commenting on that call itself, uh, it seemed like you got a little bit uh, of a burr under your saddle more after that uh, goalie interference call. But uh, when they're D, of course, you're in the in the goalie. I thought. Uh, uh, it, 
did it did it fire you up a little bit after that to just you know want to get out there and uh i don't know make a man you know just i don't know get pissed off and do something good after that yeah i mean um i understand obviously why they called that it's it's a tough play and especially for me like um i'm a guy i've done that so many times in my career where i've drove uh drove wide and then um just made an angle where obviously you're not going to take out the goalie and just in that circumstance it, from my perspective i got pushed but um obviously like i said i see why the refs called it and i think um that was a little bit of a interesting one for me just to to accept but no, I think um, just, I don't know if it lit a fire in me or whatnot, but I think um, just overall, I just wanted to kind of get that one back. I felt that um, I probably should have uh, created a better chance on that one, even though the guy did push me, but um, yeah, it is what it is. So I think, uh, yeah, I don't know if it lit a fire, but yeah. Kate Shefty, the Gazette. Hey, did you want a, back, a bounce back effort after being on the ice for two of the goals against the Sharks the other night? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I feel like lately I'm on the ice for almost every single goal against. So I think just for me going into playoffs here, especially, um, and then as a decor as well, I think tonight we were better um, on, on gaps and in our defensive zone other than a few mishaps, but um, it's just going to be gaining that confidence and more momentum going into playoffs. And especially for me, I just have to kind of get back to that style of game. I like to play in the defensive zone that I think has been lacking just in terms of um, whether it's just effort or, or the compete level um, lately. So, no, I think for me, um, yeah, I definitely want to be on both sides, but I obviously want to minimize the the negative aspects of being on the ice um, for goals against. We'll take one more here for Kale. Peter Bod, The Athletic. Yeah, Kale, what are your early impressions of, of Alex Newhook and playing with him? Yeah, he's uh, he's a fireball, basically. He's he's so fast. And it's fun to watch when when forwards can kind of chip it by the the be and um, still beat them to the puck so uh, it makes it fun for us on the back end when they're able to get the retrieve the puck and then get it back up to us and then obviously it, it rewards them as well when they go to the net and we're able to have an awesome offensive zone shift so no I think he's done a great job in terms of stepping into that role and um, I'm excited to see see what else he can do because he's definitely a definitely a great uh, great kid and a great hockey player as well all right thank you Kale sweet thank you All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jared, uh, before the hockey questions, just Nathan McKinnon, was that more of a, a rest night or, or is that an injury that's going to be a few days? Uh, he's banged up a little bit. And uh, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's, it's nothing serious um, at this point. He, he was getting some uh, work done this morning and um, trying to get ready to play and he's just hurting a little bit so we decided to um not risk um making his uh injury or, or his issue worse so we went without him tonight and and um you know we'll have to make a decision on tomorrow or tomorrow but we'll just see how he's feeling we're just going to keep talking to him i don't want him playing through uh things that, that could possibly get worse at this point because um, we're getting close to the postseason here. So um, we went without him and, and um, we were able to get the win tonight and we'll address tomorrow, tomorrow. And then in terms of, of the game tonight, it was a great response. And I know the two things you said you really wanted to see, um, do you guys do a little bit better? It was puck management, using your legs to check, especially defensively. Just what did you think about your response? And then also Tyson Joe stepping into, into Nate's spot on that top line. Yeah, so I, I thought we played with a real good consciousness tonight. We talked about it uh, pregame, just making sure that uh, our defending and checking habits were going to get better here. Um, we, we've, we've done a good job at certain points during games. Uh, it's been a little bit sporadic uh, from an effort standpoint and just making some reads that, that haven't been the best here recently. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were – we could check the box and say that we outworked them uh, because, you know, the last few games, I'd say it's, it's been 50, 50 uh, 
we did a nice job on that tonight. I thought our, our competitiveness and our work ethic and our forecheck and getting back above pucks, all those things that we talked about, we, we did a nice job. But we, had, we weren't perfect, but it was a real good step in the right direction here uh, with still four games to go. So I, I liked it, the, way, the way we played tonight a lot. And, you know, I think we, we missed on some real good opportunities. We missed the net on them. We, we had chances on the power play on 5 on 5 from the slot a few times. That, that we missed the net on. So we, there's a little bit of execution issues on our power play as it went on, uh, but a real good first one to get us a big goal. Uh, Josty was, uh, I thought he was good tonight. He worked hard, uh, a little fancy with the puck in the offensive zone a couple times. I think that's a, a, a Guys start playing with Miko and Landy and, and start trying to change their game, but he skated, he made plays, um, he makes a good decision. Uh, he misses a lane early on one entry and then makes a good decision to put it to the net with Miko going there and it has the eyes and goes in. So um, he, I thought he, he was a real good 200 foot player for us tonight. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, you guys only committed one penalty and that one was. Uh somewhat borderline based on the fact that Kale was pushed into the goalie. But uh, if you could just talk about the discipline of your team tonight. Well, it's part of it. It's what we, we, we talked about discipline before the game and, and even in morning skate and what it would take. And it's not just the discipline to, um, you know, stay out of the penalty box. And that's, like I said, skating to check and, and having disruptive sticks. And, um, and we did that. It, 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 when you're doing the early work to get above pucks and and to come on to pucks and check the puck back and you're and you're real competitive and you're and you're skating, then you're going to take less penalties. It's when you kind of you know stand up and rest for a second or two and you're watching the play and then something pops out that you get yourself in bad spots. Guys get inside you, you got to start reaching in and it's something we've noticed here. We've been taking more penalties here, here recently, but. Again, I addressed that our, our work ethic has been a little bit sporadic. And um, so tonight was real good. And, and, and that, was, that was part of our discipline. And, and it's important because there's some of the teams that we're playing here have, have lethal power plays. And um, you got guys missing out of the lineup that, that bring a lot to our penalty kill. And other guys are trying to step up. But you don't want to tax those guys and, and, and give them opportunities. We saw what happened in, in uh, San Jose. We took a couple penalties 200 feet from our net and ended up costing our, us the game. So uh, these games are real important to us and, and guys really bought into to, you know, what we we're trying to do here tonight when we got the job done. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, what does um, Miko reaching the 30 goal mark say about the caliber of player he is, especially in this condensed season? I mean, he's elite. Um, he, he's, an, he's an elite player. Uh, and he's had an elite season and you know last year we've talked about it he had he had some injuries and he had to go fight through some adversity and was real good for us but this year he's been healthy the whole time he's and and he's 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 taken on a leadership role and he's going out every night to be a difference maker and and that's regardless of who he's playing with or, or who's in the lineup. He, want, he wants the puck and he's confident with it and he's been doing a lot of real good things for us and he continued again tonight. Arif Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, I just wanted your thoughts on Alex Newhook's game today and overall his last two games. Uh, does this look like a rookie to you that's just kind of trying to get his feet wet or does he look like he belongs? I thought he was better tonight. I thought he, uh, I mean, he showed flashes of what I think he can do in, in both games. Uh, it's going to take him a little bit of time. It's a tough league and, and getting used to how quick things are and and um, the, how hard guys check, it's, 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 it'll be like something he hasn't seen before. And I thought that, you know, he thinks the game real well. He, he's making smart reads. He's in the right places. He's trying to be responsible defensively. And as he kind of figures out, you know, when he can get a little bit more aggressive and more dynamic, he'll do that. And, you know, the goal tonight was a pretty good example. He, he finds some room in the neutral zone instead of just chipping it in, even though it was an even man rush. He stutter steps a guy, drives him, and then he drops it off. And then we make one more play. And next thing you know, Kale's walking right in and, and doing what Kale does and finds the back of the net. So it's, it's a big play. It's, it, was, it wasn't anything fancy, but it was, it was patient with the puck. It was, um, 
making the right play at the right time, making the right read, and it's a it's a eyes up play that was a you know had a high percentage of success and it, and it gets us a goal. So I, I I thought he was a little better tonight. I thought he skated a little better tonight. He was more uh, hungry on the forecheck, um, just getting a little bit more aggressive. And I think he'll continue to take those steps. So I, I've liked what he's done here in the two games that we've seen him. We'll take two more here for Jared. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, yeah, Coach, a couple more questions were already taken, but uh, uh, I guess I should ask you about Nemeth. Uh, he went into the boards pretty hard. Uh, does it look like he's going to be out, or uh, could we just day-to-day? -day? Uh, it, it could be just day-to-day, -day, yeah. Um, he went in uh, kind of funny upper body, like hit his head, and his neck kind of got twisted around a little bit. Um, he, he doesn't have a concussion, I, I can tell you that. So, uh, but he was sore. Um, I don't know. We'll just. Say, I guess we'll see him in the morning. He'll get some treatment, and then we'll make a decision on him for tomorrow. Uh, I haven't ruled him out at this point, though. And last one here, Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, this might be a little early or premature, but uh, in terms of new hook, have you guys decided if you're willing? to burn the first year of his contract, obviously the seventh game in the regular season, he burns it, but you've only got four games left and then the playoffs, he plays in the playoffs and he, he, he burns it. Have you guys decided if, since you guys are all in, if you're willing to burn the first year of his contract? Yeah, Mike, I'm not even sure that's the case. I know for some guys, all those guys have different, um, stipulations to their contract and and i'm not even sure that's the case that um there is a, a fact that he can burn a year or not uh that's probably a better question for joe because i know some guys have that uh, depending on age and when they sign where they played and all that and i don't even know all those ins and outs to the to the cba for the contracts but if that's even the case but we i haven't discussed that with joe at all we just wanted to get a look at him and see if he can help us and if he can make an impact for us, and then we'll go from there. Um, but that, that's something I guess you'd probably have to ask Joe or Chris. All right. Thank you, Jared. All right. Thank you.